Hello everyone and welcome to the January 2018 edition of the 220 Mastermind. I'm Matthew Moivon. And I'm Joseph Moivon. Today we're going to really dig into passion and how you can use that as a compass for your life. But first, I want to talk about the Kickstarter. So you should have gotten an email earlier this month with a link to download your Kickstarter workbook. And that's basically where we do everything. That's going to be where you set your goals. That's going to be where you set your milestones, your daily habits, and everything. Make sure, if you haven't already, that you download that and start to tick through it. That's really a way for you to start advancing your goals on your own, past the program that we've already done with you, and even beyond the program, continue to be enhanced through this mastermind. So make sure you do that if you haven't already. All right, so we're going to start with passion. It's something we talk about a lot in our meetings, in our programs, with our students, with young professionals who we work with too. And we're laughing because passion's kind of funny. I mean, we, we talk about it all the time. And for us, if we think back to things we were passionate about, I mean, it always came back to sports. Like growing up, we were huge Peyton Manning fans, huge Reggie Miller fans, love the Pacers, the Colts, IU football. I mean, it was just the thing that always came most natural to us. So I think when we both think about our shared passion sports is always the one that we can come back to that was there from the beginning um but as we've gone through our high school years our college years our young professional years you kind of start to figure out passions that maybe you didn't ever think you would have so like for me music has been a passion that i probably started to develop when i was in middle school and then definitely in high school and started going to a lot more concerts. And so music was something that definitely started to creep in as one of my ultimate passions. And then from there, entrepreneurship was something we always talked about and starting a business together. So you know, we feel very fortunate that we are living through our passions every single day. We play a lot of tennis, we go to a lot of concerts, and we're working in a business together where entrepreneurship is pretty much what we go to bed thinking about and what we wake up really thinking about every single day. And so, I mean, to me, passion is really the things that come easiest to you, but also the things that you think about in the morning and the things that, you know, get you most excited every single day. And those are things that some people may tell you, like, you know, you have to, you have to batch that or you can't do that for work or you can't do that, you know, in your day to day life. And we're pretty much going to tell you the opposite because those are the things that have gotten us to where we are and are the reason we do the programs that we do. And honestly, like are the reasons we enjoy life as, as much as we do every single day. We do. I mean, we wake up every single day excited and we, we talk about this a lot in our workshops, whether it's Monday and we're getting ready to go to work, which for most people, they, they dread it. They dread it the night before yeah. because they don't love work. It's not a representation of who they are and what their passions are. It, is always touted as this has to be something separate. Like Joseph said, it's gotta be something you do after work or on your own time. Yeah. But really the goal of what we talk about all the time with your ultimate life is to have that passion incorporated into everything that you do, your relationships, your lifestyle outside of work when you're not working. And then even most importantly, probably in your work, having it as a central component of that. And I think one of the questions that we get a lot from students in middle school, high school, college, we get it from young professionals, we even get it from people who are well into their adult years. What do I do if I don't know what I'm passionate about? Yeah. How, how, do I, how do I know or figure out what my passions are? And, and I think a lot of the mistake or mi misconception around this comes from people thinking that you're just born with a passion, right? You're naturally inclined to love sports right yeah. or or there's some genetic in there maybe you're naturally a little bit athletic or coordinated but you have this gene or something in you that from the moment you're born like you are destined to be passionate about sports and that's just not true at all whether it's music or whatever it is i mean it was science math it can be absolutely anything art reading writing the way that you get passionate about something is you earn it and we talk a lot about having to earn your passion. The way that you earn it is you dive in 100,000%. You, you're totally committed to doing it. And it doesn't have to be something that is, is a really hard task, right. you know, where you're like, okay, I've got to write down in my planner, like how much time I'm going to spend on doing this. Because if it feels like a chore, it's probably not a passion of yours. Something A passion of yours is something that, like Joseph said, comes easy to you. It's something that 
you do naturally in your free time without anyone forcing you to do it, right? So if you have a huge uninterrupted block of free time and you wanna go shoot baskets, right? That was something that we always did. Yeah because we just, we loved it. We didn't have to think too much about it. When we were on the court, we were happy. We were having fun. It, it didn't require too much effort. For some people, it's video games. For some people, yep. it's coding. For some people, it's reading or writing or doing art or even studying. They're really good at, at school. Yep. It, it doesn't matter. It, it, the, the real way to think about passion is what are the things that you've gotten good at naturally? And when we say naturally, it's because you haven't really had to think too much about it. A good example is our youngest brother, Jordan, who is maybe the most passionate guy that I know about sports. I mean, I every week I call him for fantasy football advice during the season because yep. I just can't invest as much time as he does into it. And he is extremely good at it. And the reason is because he's put so much time into it and it's because he loves it. So we're using a lot of sports examples, but whatever that means to you, you're probably doing things, whether it's through your extracurriculars, through organizations that you're involved in, philanthropy and, and giving back to your community. It's really thinking about what do I naturally gravitate to when I have the choice, when I'm not in a forced schedule in a classroom, when I can pick what I spend my time doing, what do I do? And a lot of people would say, oh, you know, if you, if you just watch TV or if, or if you, uh, you know, watch Netflix, then that's just being lazy. And it could be if you're just doing it to pass time or get distracted by something. But let's say that you're really interested in film or, or you love TV uh, series or, or you love the creative process behind that. Or you love evaluating and critiquing movies. Yeah. Well, maybe that could lead to something like movie writing or, or script writing or uh, some of the, one of my favorite award shows of the year is the Oscars because it looks like 80 plus percent of the awards go to the non-actors, yep. the people that are directing, writing, sound effects, costumes, things like that. And that's how you can get really invested in something and produce something productive is, is really not just do it as a pastime and do it kind of lazily and mindlessly, but say, would I get excited about doing this for work? Yeah. Yeah, and, and that's like exactly what our story is. So yeah. this doesn't just sound good, you know, because we're talking about passion and a lot of people think passion can't become a career, but but we like to start with that as part of the foundation because that has what that's what led us to where we are now. So like going back, we talked about how much we love sports and both of us suffered football injuries that prevented us from playing our favorite sport on our favorite team in high school. And for me, it was a brain surgery, so I could never play football again. And I remember I was really, you know, depressed at the time because I was like, this was my everything. This was my passion. This was kind of what I wanted to do with the next four years of my life. And the only way I could figure out how to continue working towards that passion was to become a coach for that same team and try to help the team as best as I could, even though I couldn't play anymore. What that led to was me having a passion for coaching. So becoming a problem solver and figuring out how to continue working towards that passion and buying in as much as possible led me to a coaching position on the team, which then led me to figuring out that this was something that I wanted to dedicate my life to. So Matthew has a similar story around volunteer coaching and how that led him to start a leadership camp. And that's really where we started to get a passion for personal development and for personal improvement, personal growth and realize that a lot of those resources out there weren't for students. And so really buying in and, and getting creative about how to integrate your passion into as many parts of your life as possible is what led us to starting this business. And it's why we've been successful with this business is because it just comes naturally to us. It's, it's literally what we wake up wanting to do every single day. And a lot of days it doesn't even feel like work because we're working together, we're reading stuff we love, we're watching stuff we love, and we get to incorporate whatever we want into that, but typically those are things that we really care about. It's awesome, and, and one of the things that is so core to talking about this subject and how to incorporate passion into your career is one thing that we experienced firsthand, which is you have to be willing to think outside of the box yep. and go beyond the traditional systems you're involved in. So if you just go through the motions and leave passion as kind of this side project that you do when you have time, 
even if you're a great student and you end up at a good college and you know you go through that process learning everything you can and you get hired out of school if you're doing if you're following a path that someone else laid out or that you think makes sense because it's safe yeah then you're not going to fall into a career you're really passionate about by accident right you have to make it a priority and so for us it was really kind of going through that stage where everyone in high school was going to college so that's what we did and we're not saying we're not glad we didn't go to college right. very glad we did and once we got there everybody was that at least in our close friends group was doing the business school which we thought okay you know that makes sense give you a lot of options later we'll do the business school yep. most people were doing finance majors because that was the most versatile and we weren't necessarily passionate about finance but we said okay you know that makes sense to me i, I don't really know what i want to do because i haven't really been asked with open options with if failure wasn't an option if you could design your life from scratch i was just kind of following the crowd right and, and that's just what you do that's what i'm talking about with that traditional path mm -hmm. and so we ended up there we ended up in great corporate jobs out of school both had great experiences we're getting paid really well making money we were saving money but there was that feeling missing we were going through that sunday night oh, here's another week the weekend's over what a bummer and then you know kind of waiting for the week. oh it's hump day you know the the worst corporate phase ever is like oh it's wednesday we're halfway there it's thursday only one more day till friday it's like you're just counting down and wasting this time and for what until your your day and a half or two day weekend uh that's just not a way to go through life and the way that you disrupt that is the what what we do is you have to ask yourself is this my ultimate am i the happiest most productive version of myself and if i'm not don't think about the money don't think about the obstacles that it's going to take to overcome and, and get to that place if if nothing was in the way and even thinking long term we have you guys do that exercise think 10 years out what does my ultimate life look like and for us it was not staying in those corporate jobs or rising up or even maybe changing companies within those same industries we knew we wanted to come back to those passions that mm -hmm. we had been heavily investing in entrepreneurship coaching sports and personal development we knew that for us to be living our ultimate that had to be part of our life every single day and even though we were doing it outside of work we wanted that to be a central part of work of excuse me of work and what that allowed us to do is if because we're so passionate about it and we love it so much we're going to deliver the absolute best value and create the biggest impact yep. that we as humans as as who we are matthew and joseph boybon brothers the biggest impact that we possibly can because the only way to do that is to really care about what you're doing and love what you're doing and that's why passion is so important yep yeah so then you know once once you have your passion figured out and you really understand what are the things that come naturally to you they may not even be things that people would normally consider passions but that next phase of designing your life around your passions is is thinking unrealistically so we talk about this in our workshops we talk about this in our emails it's one of our favorite concepts to reinforce and if you've heard us talk about this before it's always a good refresher to think about your unrealistic vision but when we ask you to think 10 years down the road because if you don't design your life for yourself it's gonna get designed for you through the systems, through education, through whatever else happens. You have to choose what that vision's gonna be and then attack it with everything you have. So when we're talking about unrealistic, we're gonna ask you to think 10 years down the road, and this is an exercise in your Kickstarter, but think 10 years down the road about how you can create an unrealistic life, which doesn't mean that it's not gonna happen, it just means that most people would say it's unrealistic so you can't go after and have that life for yourself. We're the prime example. There's tons of other examples out there of people who have designed an unrealistic life for themselves. And a lot of that was just going through and actually attacking those goals with everything they had and not getting held back by the hard obstacles that are in the way from that. So when you're thinking 10 years out and thinking unrealistically, 
we always ask you to think about your work, your lifestyle, and your relationships. Those are, from what we've found, the three most critical parts of any life is to have great relationships with people, have work that's meaningful to you that contributes back to the world, and then have things outside of that that you really care about so you're always instilling your passions in whatever it is that you're doing. Definitely. And one of the things that I think gets most overlooked with this is especially even when we work with people, is getting that temporary sense of excitement and motivation. Because with a little bit of help and thinking about things the right way, we can get people to think unrealistically, and you can get yourself to think unrealistically. And, and so the question then becomes, like, how, do you, how do you maintain that? Right. You know, and how do, you, how do you make something that sounds so exciting and, and gets you just lit up yeah. in a workshop or even in a temporary moment in when you're at home or watching something in a classroom like how do you how do you sustain that type of excitement and and formalize it into something that you can actually achieve right um, and so I think one of the things to make sure is really focusing first on making that vision as tangible as you can Yep. So a lot of times people say, well, it'd be great to have some sort of career in this, or it'd be great to be able to travel to a lot of countries, mm -hmm. or it'd be great to have really meaningful relationships. And, and that's all wonderful. But without making that more specific or more tangible, yep. it's easy to lose sight of that vision by all the things you have going on every single day, right? You have things at your job you have responsibilities yeah you have school you have whatever you have on a daily basis it makes it really easy to lose that vision that even though it's exciting it's not very tangible yep. so the, the things that we always tell people is the more specific you can be the better and so if you can say instead of oh I want to work in a career that I love you could say well I don't know exactly what I want it to be but I know I have these three passions I'm passionate about sports music and writing so I want to have a career in one of those three that lights me up every single day. So all of a sudden, you have something that you can actually picture a little bit more tangibly, whether you're writing from home every day, or you're a sports agent that goes to all the games, or you're a music producer that works with all the artists that you love. Something that can make it way more tangible, and then that allows you to work backwards way easier, which is another one of our big themes, yep. and identify those milestones. Like, okay, if I wanna be there in 10 years, how do I, how do I get there in seven, five, working all the way backwards? What do I need to do in the next year to put myself on that path? Yeah, and and the other thing, getting tangible about your vision, the other thing that does is it gets you more excited. So, what what we're talking about with passion and excitement, those go hand in hand. And I, I think we've talked a lot about how we are where we are, but the reason is because we've been excited about it. And what the excitement has done is it's allowed us to overcome obstacles that most people wouldn't be willing to overcome. So whether it was back in high school, Matthew had back problems, I had head problems, we had to get creative about how we could continue to stay excited about our sports. So we did volunteer coaching, which most high school students honestly aren't willing to do. And when we started this business, we wanted to self-fund it, and we've had to overcome I mean, insane, insane amounts of obstacles that we didn't anticipate and that even though we knew were coming have been extremely difficult and it's made us question ourselves at times. It's given us huge, huge shots to our ego and just our, our confidence in ourselves, but our vision is what has helped us maintain that. And, you know, I, I had to start driving Uber for a stretch there because my savings weren't lasting as long as I had anticipated. So I was waking up at 3.30 or 4 in the morning on Mondays to make sure I could earn as much as possible to get back to work on this business and to get it to where we wanna go. So we talk about passion and excitement because it's not only something that gets you excited, but it gives you a reason to overcome really challenging obstacles that most people wouldn't be willing to overcome. And I think the excitement playing off of each other is, is why we are where we are. And it is why we're talking to you on this webinar. It's just, it's created the ultimate motivation and it's created the ultimate reason to continue to overcome the obstacles that we've had to face, which everyone has to face. If, if you really wanna go against the grain and create an unrealistic vision and, and have a life that you're excited about every single day, and if you don't, then 
you maybe you won't face as many obstacles, but at that point, it's kind of like, what are you, what are you going for? You know, what are you, what are you spending your precious time doing if you're not trying to overcome and do something special that you really care about? I think that's so important is that that passion piece can get you over the hump for yeah. those obstacles that you're going to face anyway. Yeah. Right. If you're if you're going through a career that you're lukewarm about or even mediocre about you're still going to face obstacles about how do I get paid more? How do I get promoted more? How do I get more responsibility at work? How do I find more excitement? And those things get really hard and, and it's easier to give up when you're not super excited about something. Yeah. But if you are, then all of a sudden it's like you have a re it's worth it. You have a reason to work hard. You have a reason to do things that no one else is willing to do because you're so excited about it. It, feel, it lights you up. It's fulfilling and it's what yeah. you love. And so I think another thing that is worth talking about, kind of going back to unrealistic, is how to know if you're setting un an unrealistic enough yeah. goal, if that's even the right term. Yeah. Uh, it should be because we're making it up. So basically the way you want to think about it, I, I think there's a couple components. Number one is, it, and you've probably heard this before, we've heard it in different contexts and we love this, is if someone is not telling you that you shouldn't do it, or if someone is not doubting you, then it's probably not high enough, yeah. right? If, if, and there's other ways to say it, if your goals aren't big enough, or if someone's laugh, or not laughing at your goals, then your goals aren't big enough. So that's, I always think that's really one good thing, is like, yeah. if you're not hearing from people that, wow, like that's, that's probably not gonna happen, then it's probably not something that's gonna get you excited enough to overcome those obstacles that we were talking about. Uh, I think one of the other things to really think about is does it get you uncomfortable slightly when you think about it? Yeah. So yes, it should get you really excited, but it should also trigger that feeling in the pit of your stomach that's like, wow, I know that's going to be really hard. And so like for us, that was you know being able to start a business in the education space, doing something we absolutely love without any investors. Most people and a lot of close people that that matter a lot to us that we really sought out their feedback for told us that that was going to be unrealistic yeah. based on us being too young or not having any experience or whatever so <laughs> it, that that right there is kind of a, a sign that goes back to that first point but also it, it made us have that feeling in the pit of our stomach of like wow if we got there you know we're, we're picturing the vision it would be insane yeah. like we'd wake up excited every single day but man there's a lot of obstacles in front of that like i'm gonna have to work really hard do a lot of things that most people aren't willing to do and that was kind of validation that it felt uncomfortable enough at the same time feeling so excited about it yeah yeah and another example uh we like to use is a friend that went to our high school um it's probably five nine maybe five ten <laughs> 130 pounds when he was in high school and he you know he wanted to go to the NBA when he was younger the the National Basketball League where 0.01% of all basketball players make it and I would laughed at him people would have laughed at him right I mean he was he just didn't have the frame or the skill set to to get there and what having that vision did for him was it allowed him to become a high school manager at our high school basketball team go on to Indiana University to become a manager there for four years where he studied film, he worked with Tom Crean, he worked with Victor Oladipo and all these different people. And now he's working in the front office for the Cleveland Cavaliers as one of the developmental league coaches and one of the front office people in that position. So when we talk about passion, we talk about your 10 year vision, it doesn't necessarily mean that you're gonna get it if you just ask for it. But if you continue to work towards that at all times and have that as the beacon for where you want to go, then there's sometimes things that happen and work for you that end up putting you in a place where you're better off and your skills can be uh, even enhanced more so than they would have been in your original ultimate life. So that's just an example to say, you know, these things are perfect to think about and have in place. That doesn't mean they're always gonna take you exactly there, but they are gonna take you somewhere maybe even better than where you thought that 10-year vision was taking you in the first place. Or way closer, right? Because you're or just, closer, it's just yeah. not gonna be by accident. You right. Know, we, we love these examples. Yeah. Another one is uh, a friend of ours who played basketball at Indiana, 
uh, and ended up, you know, he could have just stopped and said, oh, I'm going to... I'm going to just settle for a normal job. And he did he didn't get play it. play that much. Yeah, either. he didn't yeah. play very much. He, he kind of rode the bench, uh, even though, like, he, you know, he would dominate probably two on one, both yeah. of us. But, uh, you know, he could have easily said, okay, you know, bas- a career in basketball is over for me. I got to get serious and get a real job. And he did. He got a job uh, selling insurance. But on the side, he, he was like, I'm, I'm going to keep doing this. I'm, I'm going to, I, I love it so much. And I know that I have value to add to people that I'm going to, I'm going to find a way to stay in it and stay with it. And so he started two companies, one basketball training company and one weightlifting, basically health, coaching, fitness yeah. and nutrition coaching company. And a couple years ago, he left to do it full time. And now he's living his passion every single day. And I learned something from him, from his Instagram pretty much every single day, a new exercise or a new tip or something like that. And I'm reminded of, of how much more I should have practiced in basketball when I watch all of his students go. And, and it's just so cool to see him doing that every single day because him, like, like we, we know that feeling that he's going through every single day. Yeah. Yeah. And we've used a lot of sports examples today, which sometimes just happens because like we said at the beginning, it's, it, we really care about it and it's what we study. Um, Jay Knox. Yeah, Jay Knox. I was also going to talk about um, one of our friends we've met through the business. His name's Austin, and he lives in New York. And I, I think I would say from knowing him that his passions are helping people, and he has a passion for great jobs and careers that get people really excited. So it doesn't have to be a passion about something real tangible, but his passion is helping people, and he's created a business around helping people find their absolute ultimate job. And so what he does is he creates uh, templates and tactics and helps you interview and helps you figure out a way to get in the door. And and he has a whole entire business around this that he's going to be doing full time. And, and again, it's not always about becoming an entrepreneur, but he's working at Microsoft right now at a job that he loves. So uh, Matthew's got a great example about one of our best friends from home too, but it's not always necessarily about sports or about some of the basic passions, but it can just be you know, really wanting to help people and using your strength and expertise to really help people with what they want to do. Definitely. And the one of my favorite examples is one of my best friends since kindergarten literally always had to have that first generation Apple product, whatever it was, like whatever, whether it was, you know, if he already had the phone, he was going to get the next phone as soon as it came out. And he was the first to have the first iPod and he always had the next iPod. And then when the watch was coming out, he was going to absolutely be one of the first ones to do it. And it's because he loved technology so much and he loved Apple's product focus around incorporating music. Yeah. And it would have been really easy to just say, well, I'm just always going to have Apple products. Yeah. He ended up going to work for Beats headphones by Dr. Dre which got acquired by Apple a couple years ago, and now he gets to work for Beats and Apple, immersed in technology, sales, and music and development. He's doing keynote speeches for products. It's amazing, and that's somebody that's literally just totally immersed in their passion. It's not sports, or it's not something that's super tangible, but it's combining a love for music and technology that- And nice things. And nice things. Yeah. if, If you settle for something realistic which most people will tell you to do you're just not going to find that type of stuff so we've talked a lot about if you can't tell we have a huge passion for talking about passion (laughs) but we want to wrap it up but as as some of the main takeaways it's really just if you if you take nothing else away from from this mastermind video just think about how can i incorporate passion into my life every single day how can i continue to develop my passion and even weed out passions you know really dive in and see if it's a passion some a lot of people think they're passionate about something but they only stay surface level on it and once they go deep into the details they realize oh wow this not for me it's not something i really want to do so just keep it at the forefront of your mind every day whether you're going through a monotonous routine in, in work or school or whatever it is really make sure to take time every day whether it's in the morning or at night and think about giving yourself some space to really reflect on, did I do something I'm passionate about today? Or did I, did I advance myself or, or give myself the opportunity to be passionate today? Yep, and, and the best way we know how to do that is to lay out that 10-year unrealistic vision, which is right there in your Kickstarter. 
that's where a lot of those passions are gonna get teased out and you're gonna figure out, oh wow, I, I do really have a passion for traveling or for seeing my family or for volunteering at my church. All those things are gonna come out when you really think about your unrealistic ultimate life through that Kickstarter. So you should have that from your email. This is us rolling off of Mastermind 1, 2018 in January. And if you have any questions, respond in the comments below or let us know via email. We're here, we're here to help you however we can. Awesome, guys. Dream big, never settle, live 220. Thanks, guys.